Have you ever wondered if you can grow food 365 days a year? Well, maybe you can. My name's Jason, this is Art of Creation Homestead, and we're gonna show you how you can grow food all year round in a raised bed. So here we have some raised beds that we've built on the back of our property. We use a lot of raised beds to up against the fence again to keep them on the parameters of our yard. But at the same time, these raised beds are twofold. They kind of kept varmints from digging under. But what we did was we made these raised beds here. We have four of them on the back line here and they're about 18 inches wide and they'll go from six and a half to eight feet eight feet wide depending on what section we have them in and so here we have a bed that's 18 inches wide like i said and we planted uh, carrots in it last year last fall and in this scenario these raised bed these raised beds are facing south so they got a little extra sun and we kept them covered in a, in, with a structure similar to this we used agravon this is a improved version for ourselves it's a, a small hoop structure that you can buy online so we planted this thing full of carrots um, last fall and they lasted all the way through the winter and we were able to harvest some actually towards the end of winter start of spring um, we had fresh carrots that we grew during the winter uh, another thing and right now we have cabbage in there but another thing we've done was we planted the spinach down here and this spinach as you can see it's really healthy. It's looking really good. We planted this spinach last fall, and here we are in the spring, and we got spinach we can harvest. Now, part of that was probably due to the mild winter, but a lot of it's due to a good scenario. Um, raised beds will hold heat. If they if they get sun at all, the wood will absorb heat, and it'll release that heat into the dirt and keep your stuff from freezing as easily. Um, now you still may want to cover it. Or with some with some form of um, garden fabric or garden covering, frost protector. But um, either way, it is a good it's a good investment if you can if you can use it to grow fresh food in your backyard. So here we have a small four foot by two foot raised bed, and it's here it is. So it's early April, and we're gonna plant some radishes here, and. What we do is we use something called square foot gardening method. You can look that up online, just type in square foot gardening and whatever vegetable you'd like to plant. Um, and it'll show you what you can do. Like for instance, radishes, they say in a square foot you can plant six, you can get 16 radishes. So that's gonna be, uh oh, hold on, we gotta do math. Sorry, I know I didn't tell you there's math involved. So, so in a square foot you can get 16, so that's what? Uh, one, Pull out two, your toes. Three. Got shoes on. You can get one every four inches. So it's found four inches apart. Now, well, this is two feet. So, in a two foot by two foot spot, we can get a little bit more, can't we? Okay. Still every four inches. No matter how big your space is, just remember radishes every four inches in that manner. So, these are French breakfast radishes from Baker Creek. I'm going to plant these every four inches. And your, your obsessive side, like mine, can can start freaking out and start going get a tape measure out get a ruler out start trying to go over four inches and space it out just right or i have to fight against that and i just start eyeballing it and it'll be okay so we have to do this i think it's i think it's a great idea to get um fresh radishes it works out really well and the great thing about once you get done with these is so these will be done in about 25 days after germination. You gotta remember that. That's anytime they tell you how many days you have until germinate uh, to maturity, it's, it should be after germination. So we're just, I'm just planting, uh, trying not to worry too much about spacing, but if you get them a little too close, so maybe you can thin them later if they're a little too close for you. But um, one thing that's great about this is, so here we are in April, I don't know what is this fourth, fifth, fifth, and uh, these will be done by the middle of May. So once you harvest these in the middle of May, you will then be able to plant something else. Like what we will do is we'll have squash seeds started, summer squash. You also be yellow squash, zucchini, maybe uh, maybe even a winter squash, and we'll have those seeds started, and the plants will be ready to go into the ground right here afterwards and uh, so then 
once you get done with those, that, you know, that can go for a while. And once they're all wore out, because they, they, they burn out after a little bit, they just produce so much that they'll burn out. And uh, after you get done with that, you can then plant uh, something else for the winter. Uh, you can start some, you can put kale, uh, lettuce, spinach, things that, things that like cool weather. You can get them in the ground and get them germinated and and uh, get those get those plants going. And then you'll be able to have, harvest that up into the winter. Uh, parsnips is a good one. Parsnips actually likes to be frosted on. And so by the time the parsnips get mature, they take a while anyway. So like you can plant parsnips at the start of August. And then you could let them go let them get frosted on late, later in the year. And you can have parsnips. Some people don't like them. I happen to love them. And uh, one thing, another idea that we have is if we don't plant, um, if we don't plant a, um, like a squash, we might plant some uh, bush beans or some uh, bush beans that are allowed to go for, uh, for harvesting dry beans out of. Um, a Jacob's cattle or a borlato bean. The, I love to grow dry beans and they grow well in this time, kind of setting. They only take you know 60, 70 days and then they'll come out and you can plant something of that nature. Um, it's just an outstanding way to maximize your growing space. A lot of times people are going to say that they don't want to garden because they can't, that you know, they don't want to spend all the time for just one thing well here you can get several things in a small space and just continue to grow and this is just a four by two bed but yeah you can grow so much in it so that was french breakfast radish here we have something called a rat tail radish we've never grown this before i personally do not care if we ever grow it again but my wife wants to grow it so hey happy wife happy life <clears throat> i don't really care for anything that says rat in the in the, in the uh, title but, you know, it ain't all about me, I guess. So, we'll plant these. We'll see how they do. Just put them in there. Sock them in the ground. One thing you also need to do is make sure that you um, prep your, your raised beds appropriately. By that I mean uh, put some blood meal, bone meal in there like rashes. Radishes need uh, a decent amount of nitrogen and phosphorus. So a good um, organic uh, fertilizer would be um, blood meal for nitrogen and bone meal for phosphorus. So make sure you do that appropriately because if you do not do that and your ground has been zapped dry of all of its energy, you're gonna feel like an idiot and look like a failure if you don't get anything. And you know, ain't no sense in that, is there? So, you can do all that. And that's how we, we got all these rashes planted now. Like I said, these will be ready. The French breakfast rashes will be harvested in about 25 days. And after that, we'll plant, we'll plant squash in this bed in reality. We'll have those seeds, you can start those seeds in cups or containers. But this is a really good way of maximizing your growing potential by, by what, what's called succession planting. Just cover them over. Don't forget you gotta water your seeds afterwards because they will not grow without water. Not that hard. But there you have it. There's a good way to grow food for 365 days a year. Jason's been Artist Creation Homestead. God bless and goodbye.